there was one really good man amongst these people. He was good. In fact, he was so good, you know, that uh, Allah loved him. But he was getting old, and just before he died, he told his wife, he said, I have a cow. I have this calf. It's actually a young calf. He said, um, I don't want anybody to take it. My son is too small, so I'm going to release this calf out in the forest. I'm going to let it go. But you tell him about it, and then at the right age, Allah will let him have it back. She's like, huh? So the man died. Well, when the boy grew up a little bit, you know, got older, now, watch what happens. There is another man who was really rich, rich, and he died. And he left all his wealth to his son. Some greedy people wanted it, so they killed the son, thinking they could get the wealth. And this story is in the Quran too, but I'll give you the, this side of the story so you can go in. It's in Surah Baqarah, you can read about it, chapter 2. So what happened, Moses told them, go get a calf, a, a young cow. It's not old and it's not a baby, but it's just the right age. Go get it, bring it, and we're going to put a part of it on this dead body. And it will tell us, it's going to tell us who killed it. The body will speak. They said, what? He said, listen, go get a calf, not too young, not too old, bring it, and we're going to take the tongue of it and put it on this body, and it's going to tell us who killed it. They're like, what? They come back and they said, uh, well, uh, what color is the calf? He said, it's yellow. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Well, uh, uh, go ask your Lord, because this is inspiration from the law, actually. He said, go, uh, go ask your Lord exactly about this calf, because, you know, really, we don't know about cows. We really don't. So uh, the thing was, they didn't want to do it, did they? So then Allah sent Moses back to him again. He said, it's a young calf, but not too old and not too young. It's a yellow calf or young heifer. Actually, heifer is what we call them in Texas. And it has never pulled a plow. It's never had a yoke on its neck. It never did any work. Now, all the cows have been used for something. Every cow there had been used for something. So we're going to find such a cow as that. Guess what? Remember the boy's cow? It was in the forest. It never did any work ever, did it? And what color was it? It was the right color, wasn't it? Perfect. So they were talking. I said, who's got a cow like that? Somebody said, hey, you know that boy, that young orphan boy? Remember him? I heard he's got a cow. Let's go check it out. They went. They said, that's the one. That's the one. Look. Have you, have you ever used that cow for anything, boy? Have you ever had, like, pulled any wagons with it or done any work? He said, no, never have. <laughs> uh, about how old do you think it is? He said, well, it's not too young, not too old. It's just, you know. He said, man, that's the one. Well, we'll give you three bucks for it. Three dollars? Three dollars? Oh, you're so nice. What? <laughs> he said, I wouldn't take that. He said, I have to ask my mother. I said, oh, okay. So he went and asked his mother, and she said, no, of course not. So he told them, nope, can't do it. They said, okay, okay, we'll give you more. He said, it wouldn't matter to me how much you offer me. I have to ask my mother. They said, but we'll give you so much, you know, a little more. He said, I wouldn't care if you took the skin off of this cow and filled it up with gold. I won't take it unless my mother says so. Well, ask her, ask her. So he went back again. He said, Mom, I told him I wouldn't care if you took the skin off the cow and filled it with gold. I wouldn't take it unless you said so. She said, that's the price. That's the price. They want it. They're going to kill it anyway. So just take the skin off of it, fill it up with gold, and that's what we want. And they had to because there was no other cow like it. So they did. Oh, and by the way, Sure enough, when they put that tongue on that body, it told who did it. Oh, yeah. One of the stories of Moses, which I found very fascinating, is found in the Quran, and it's also narrated by the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, in more detail in Hadith, in the collection called Sahih Bukhari. It's very fascinating when you consider the, the aspects of the story. There are many things that go with this story. It's not just a short story, and it has a lot of thinking that goes with it. So listen carefully. Uh, first of all, it was like this. Prophet Moses, peace be upon him, was given like a khutbah or sermon to his people. And they really liked it. They said, wow, you know, he knows everything. He's so smart. He was, if you remember, he was very intelligent. 
When he was done, they came to him and they said, is there anybody on earth that knows more than you do? And he said, nope. Oops. Now, even prophets make mistakes. And that's a mistake because you should say, Allah alam. Allah knows best. Because there could always be somebody that knows more about something than you do. Well, at that stage, Allah let him understand that there was somebody else that had more knowledge than he did. And his name was Khidr. And this is the story of Musa and Al-Khidr. What happened was that Allah let Moses understand to take a fish and, you know, take it with him and take somebody along. And some people said, think it was Joshua, but it doesn't really matter. But somebody was traveling with him. And wherever the fish disappears, that's where you're going to meet this guy, Al-Khidr. So they were going along, going along, going along. And they stopped somewhere to, re to rest. Musa, I said, um, it was hot. He fell asleep on a rock. He was resting. And in the meantime, the boy was kind of like, you know, not paying a close attention to what's happening. And the fish got away. Went into the water in a strange way. And it made like a tunnel. And it went straight out like this. And he went, whoa, check that out, you know. And then when Musa, I said, um, woke up, he forgot to tell him. And they started going and going. And they traveled a long way. And Musa A.S. said, you know, I think we better stop and have something to eat. What do you think? I said, okay. Oh, we don't have the fish anymore. I said, what happened to the fish? He said, well, a strange thing happened. I forgot to tell you. It got in the water and it, la, 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 la. He's telling what happened to it. And he said, that was the place we needed to be. And the boy said, well, just shit on made me forget, you know. So, okay, they went back. They had to go all the way back to that same place. When he got there, there was this man, and he was dressed kind of like weird. He had this like cover, like a hood partially over him. And Musa Islam went up to him and started to speak to him. Hello, you know. And the one in, wearing the hood, he said, How do people call you in the land where you come from? How do they greet you? He said, well, They call me Moses. He said, Are you Moses that Allah spoke to? He said, Yeah. Okay. He said, Well, I'm Khidr. Oh. He said, and I have some knowledge from Allah that you don't have, but you have some knowledge that I don't have. Moses said, well, let me go like along with you and, you know, see what's up. He said, no, because uh, you won't be patient with me. You don't have that patience. He said, no, you, if, inshallah, if God wills, I'll be patient. Take me with you. So Hitter took him along. And first thing that happened, they came to some water. They were close to water anyway. And some people who had a boat, they recognized Khidr. They said, oh, you need a ride? And they didn't charge them anything. Got in the boat. Because people used to use their boats for everything, you know, like taxis today, you know. And so ordinarily they would charge you, but they let them ride free. And as they were going along, Khidr took a crowbar. Now, you know what's a crowbar? A crowbar is a long iron bar, and it's got like a hook. It looks kind of like a hammerhead on the end of it. And he got in there with some of the planks of the boards in, of the ship the, the, that they weren't. And he started pulling the planks out. And water started coming in. So much so that if they hadn't been going into the shore, which they were, you know, they probably would have sunk. And the boat couldn't go anywhere because the water came in. Moses looks at him like, are you crazy? These people gave us a free ride, man. And you just scuttled their boat. He just sunk his boat. He said, I told you you wouldn't have any patience with me, didn't I? I told you that. Now go ahead, hit the road. He said, no, 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 it's cool, it's cool. Don't worry about it. Let me just keep on going with you. I want to continue with you. He said, all right, you can go, but, you know, cool it. He didn't say cool it. I'm giving you the idea, you know. They went on a little bit further, and they came to some children playing together, older kids, playing around, doing stuff. And Kidder walked over to one boy and just popped his head and killed him. Yeah, it's in the Quran. Just killed him. And Moses was like, whoa, you killed this boy? Oh, my God. Oh, this is amazing. He said, I told you, didn't I? He said, oh, 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 I forgot, I forgot, I forgot. So... He had a promise again, he's going to be patient, won't say anything. So they went on further. And they came to a village where the people were real stingy. So much so when they asked for some food, because they're travelers. And uh, by the way, almost every 
place on earth, if you're a traveler and don't have any food, people will give you something, you know? They wouldn't give them anything. They wouldn't even give them the garbage to eat. They just said, hit the road. And then all of a sudden, Hitter stops at a place where a wall used to be, and he starts building this wall and shaping it and everything. And by the way, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, the, the, who, the one who's narrating the story was saying that, that he moves his hands like this while he was telling the story too, about this wall, how it was. And then Moses is saying, okay, look, we're putting this wall up here for these people. They wouldn't even give us a bite to eat. So why are we doing this? We could go charge them. They could pay us something to put this wall up. This is a big wall, you know. He said, that's it for you and me. I told you. No, that's it. You finished. You go your way. I'll go mine. He said, but no, 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 wait. At least tell us the meaning of what we just saw. I mean, you know, this is something too amazing. Kidder explained to him. He said, the first people, the ones that knew him, the ones that gave him a ride in the boat, he said, they're very good people. And there's a very bad king who on that same day had ordered his army to go and collect all of the boats that are doing traffic and business because he's going to take them for himself. But because this boat had a hole in it, which they could easily fix, just put the planks back. But because of all of that, the king didn't want it, the army didn't want it, they left it. So these were the only guys who had a boat after that. And they become very wealthy because of it. They were in good shape. Yeah, but what about this boy? I mean, you killed the boy. He said, ah, because Allah knows, and we don't know, but Allah knew, because this boy is coming from a very good family. They're very religious. They believe in Allah. This boy was going to oppress them really bad and put them even to disbelief because he inside he had this. And Allah knew it. So Allah is just using me to take his life. This is how you understand it. Then, as far as the wall, he said, these people are bad, as you saw for yourself. They're very stingy, and they will take anybody's money, including orphans. And this wall belongs to some orphans. The property here belongs to some orphans, children with no parents. There's treasure built, uh, bu uh, buried under here, and we're building the wall on top of the treasure, and it'll stay up until they're old enough, and then when the wall comes down or they knock it over, they'll find the treasure. And that's up to Allah, but he'll guide them to it. Oh, now Moses sees. It's narrated that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said that he wishes, he wishes that Moses would have been more patient. We could have learned a lot more, too. It helps us to understand why things happen. Sometimes you'll think, oh, why did this thing happen? It looks bad. But Allah tells you, sometimes you don't want something, but it's good for you. But you want something, and it's actually bad for you, right? Because we don't know, and Allah knows. And that was the lesson that we get out of this about Al-Khidr and Musa, Moses. Every time I think about that story, I go back and look and think, you know, these are the things that if we see it, we would have been the same way. What would you have done? Yeah? You see somebody gets a free ride on a boat and start poking holes in, you say, you're a vandal, you know, you're bad. Definitely, if you see anybody kill somebody, you'd be like, okay, that's it, man, this is really bad. And also, the idea of building this wall in the middle of nowhere for people that are basically stingy, why would you do that without getting paid? But now you see the meaning. And there are so many things like that happen every single day, not just once in a great while, but every day. But we just don't understand it, but Allah does. Shall I tell you about a prophet that is the grandson of prophets? And he's the father of a prophet. Would you like to know about him? Yeah. yeah. So this prophet's name is Dawood. But we call him Dawood, right? Because of Arabic. What do you think his name is in English? David. David, yeah. David. David, David, yeah. So this is, the, and he's, by the way, he's the grand, grand, grandson of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and through the tribes of Jacob. And so he is having a big lineage, a long, long line of prophets that he came from, and he was a prophet too. But he starts out a story when he was a young boy. He was a shepherd. He used to take care of sheep. Now his brothers 
actually were the shepherds and they were the older ones and they would go out. And his mom liked to keep him at home. His dad liked to keep him there. This is really a little guy, you know. And, uh, but the brothers said, well, let him go with us sometime. All right, so they would let him go and he might do some, some things and have fun, throw rocks, stuff like that, lighthearted things. Now, at that time, the children of Israel still had prophets coming to them. And the last one they had, according to their books, his name is Samuel. And probably, and I don't know this, but probably we'd have called him Shamuel <laughs> because they're reversed. But anyway, so they were complaining and they were saying, we're tired of prophets. We don't want prophets. We want to have kings like other people do because other societies and civilizations at that time had kings. And they said, we don't want any more prophets. We want a king. We want a king. We want a king. Remember when they had the manna from heaven? They were getting the food from heaven. They were getting the quails and all that. They said, we don't want that. We want garlic, onions, cucumbers, and beans and stuff. Remember that? Again, they wanted to trade something good for something less. They said, give us a king. We want a king. I said, okay. So the prophets tell them, Allah is going to give you a king, but you've got, to accept, uh, you've got to accept this king, whoever comes. Well, the king that they got, they said, no, we don't want a, this guy. He's not from a rich tribe. He's from the poor. No, we want, we want like a mighty, powerful guy, strong and rich, and you know that's what we want for a king. Said no, this is the one Allah wants you to have. And again, complaining, huh? Same thing again. Here we go again. Anyway, according to the Quran, according to the Arabic language, we know his name to be Talut. Can you say Talut? Talut. 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 Yeah. And he was a good king. And he was a good leader, and certainly he was caring a whole lot about the children of Israel, taking care of them. And they were living at that time. There was a leader who was a big, mean guy, really big and really, really mean. Some people even said he was so big he was like a giant. Does anybody know his name? Jalut. Jalut. Exactly. Now that's strange, isn't it? Talut and Jalut. The king and the giant. You know, Talut, Jalut. Anyhow, oh, and in English, he's called Goliath. The story that we have on this, actually, in Islam is pretty simple that, you know, they had a fight and he was defeated. The story that they have from the old historical books, it says that this big guy comes out and he says, send me your mightiest warrior, bring him on, and I will show you, I'll show you. I'll break him in pieces. Just send one guy, bring him out here, winner take all. If I win, you guys lose. If you win, we lose. Come on, come on. He was really bad. Very, very bad. But he could beat so many people. He could just take them on and crush them. He was really a big guy. And nobody would go. <laughs> nobody would volunteer. They talked about it. They said, well, you know, I'd take a few people, go over there. Maybe we'll, like, sneak behind them. Maybe we could do this. Maybe we could do that. But back, come right to it. Nobody was going to go fight him. And that was the problem. And according to this story, it says that David says, well, I'll do it. Let me go do it. They said, you're a little boy. You're just a teenager, man. You're not going to go out against this guy. He said, just let me go. Well, their leader, the king, he said, well, are you sure you want to do this? He said, yeah. He said, it is a good distraction because when everybody's, you know, going on and being distracted with, oh, boy, and a giant, ha, 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 then we can get a good position behind there. Maybe we can do something, you know? So somehow, David convinced them to let him go. Now remember, he used to be out there in the, as a shepherd out in the desert and things like this. And what they do, they got a lot of time. And he used to play with what they call a sling. And he would take this piece of leather and like a rope thing, and he would go like this, and it would have a stone in it. And then he could like this, and it would throw it real hard, really, really, really hard. Oh, yeah. By the way, don't go home and try this and break a bunch of windows. <laughs> so anyway, this is what he did. He got out there, and, and now as soon as he went out, the giant went, What's this? What the heck are you doing? Here's the giant. He's wearing armor, solid metal all over and on his head and everything. He said, he got a sword bigger than, bigger than David. He said, This? You're sending this? 
Oh my God, he didn't even have any armor. Well, there wasn't any. It was too small. They didn't have anything to protect him because he was so little. They, they I said, oh my God. He said, you guys are trying to make fun of me, aren't you? It's, all I have to do is step on this guy, watch this. And that's going to be it. And he was laughing and all his friends are laughing and they're going crazy. They didn't realize they were being surrounded, by the way. <laughs> and this is what's happening. According to this, it, you find it in Old Testament stories. Anyway, so according to that, here's, here's this giant out there laughing and cackling and ah, 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 this is <laughs> what a bunch of cowards you are. You won't come out. You let a boy come out. Ah, ah, ah. And then he pulls out his sword and he said, now watch me. And he filled up his lungs with air. And he's ready, you know? You ever see those wrestlers do that on TV? <laughs> like this. He's like, what are you doing watching TV, by the way? <laughs> he's good. He's going to go like this. In the meantime, here's what Dawood does. He takes his little strap, puts in the stone, and he's going, Faster and faster. Now, the giant doesn't have a clue because he's not a shepherd. He doesn't know what he's doing. He didn't know that's how they kill rabbits. He didn't know that that's how they kill a fox. He doesn't know that he uses that tool all the time. He's going, okay, little boy playing with a string. Ha, ho, ho. Look at he's playing with a string. Ha, 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 ha. And about that time, he let it go. And now that rock was pretty good size. And it was coming at about 68 miles an hour. I just made that up, by the way. And then it, bam, hit him right between the eyes. And he said, oh, look at this little blop. <laughs> Cuckoo. <laughs> Pow. <laughs> they said there were two hits in that battle. One, when the rock hit him here. And the other, when his backside hit the ground, bam! <laughs> he never got up, he never moved, he was out. TKO, total knockout. That's it. One, two. <laughs> he was gone, man. <laughs> anyway, in the meantime, the people go, I can't believe it. You see that? That little boy, did you? Oh, who's this guy? Oh, what? Whoa, we're surrounded! Oh my God! <laughs> it's a good story. <laughs> but David, actually, in reality, he was a prophet. There's no doubt about it. And he was very wise. He was very, very wise. And he was very, very good. He was a very good man. And all of this is a part of these stories of the prophets. So this is a good lesson for all of us to learn from that, too.